On December 11th, I'm going to be walking up these steps to be ordained a priest of Jesus Christ. But before I do, I'd like to share with you the journey that has brought me to this place. So come, follow me. All right, the journey begins leaving Holy Rosary Cathedral and going to the place where it all started out, St. Joseph the Worker Parish in Richmond, where I received the sacraments of initiation, baptism, first Holy Communion and confirmation, and went to elementary school. My heart is filled with gratitude as I think about my upbringing. I have two lovely parents, Brian and Monica, who supported me in absolutely everything I did. And they did this in a special way. I have an older brother, Jonathan, who is bigger, faster, and stronger than me in everything, and I really wanted to beat him in something. And at the age of nine, I finally found a sport that I could beat my brother at, and that was the game of golf. So I fell in love with this game. This was my sport, and so my parents supported me with absolutely everything I needed to play competitive golf from the age of nine. And when I was at Vancouver College, I was able to represent Team Canada at the Junior World Golf Championships. And playing golf at such a top level got me a scholarship to an NCAA Division I school in California, St. Mary's College. But when I was at St. Mary's, I just lost all confidence in my golf swing. Let's show his golf swing. Well, it wasn't that bad, but I definitely took my frustration out of golf by partying and drinking. Just like the prodigal son who squandered his entire inheritance on a life of debauchery and finally came to his senses one day that he should probably return to the father's house. That's what happened with me. During my last month of university, my girlfriend's mother asked her to read a book called Heaven is for Real. And in order to get in the good books with her mom, I decided to read this book myself. Late one night, after coming home from the bars and not being able to sleep, I finally decided to open up this book. And through this near-death experience of Colton Burpo, I finally started asking big questions about the purpose of my life. And then, to add on top of that, I got an email from my mom saying that for her birthday, she wanted me to go to the sacrament of confession. Although I hadn't been in confession for over five years, I had just read that book, Heaven is for Real, and I wanted a new start in life. And so I decided to give it a try. So I remember going to this priest and I said, I have no idea how to give a confession. Uh, it's been over five years and I just lived the, this total party life in college. And I always remember his first question. He said, well, how many times have you gotten drunk since your last confession? And I'd, I'm a math guy, so I started thinking in my head, you know, it's like twice a week, uh, you know, 54 weeks in a year, five years. It's like, wow, you know, maybe over 500 times. And that was just the beginning of probably 20 to 30 minutes of speaking with this priest. Um, and when I, when I, I remember so clearly kneeling down in front of this priest and hearing these words of absolution and just leaving in total confusion, like, did all of that experience I had in college, did it all just get wiped away? Like, what actually just happened there? And I felt this freedom in my heart for the first time in my life, as though I had these chains just wrapped around my heart, and that was the normal for my life, and I didn't even know what freedom felt like. And that experience of freedom just set my heart on fire, that it it just made me want to, to be able to give that to other people. After that encounter with Christ in confession, I can remember this drive so well, going to St. Joseph the Worker Parish for the 1115 Mass, a Mass that I would never forget. The first time that I knew I was not receiving a piece of bread, I was receiving Jesus. The same Jesus who just forgave my sins in confession was now coming into my heart through Holy Communion. You know, the Eucharist is not a piece of bread. The Eucharist is actually a person. This just blows my mind that when I'm distributing Holy Communion and I say the body of Christ, I'm not giving you a piece of bread. I'm actually giving you a living Person. 
after coming to this realization that Jesus is truly present in the most blessed sacrament, I just wanted to spend time with him. Thankfully, I found that opportunity at the Perpetual Adoration Chapel at St. Paul's, which is the next stop on our journey. This adoration chapel was a real game changer in my discernment to go to the seminary for two reasons. One, although I had a good Catholic girlfriend at the time, I found myself wanting to spend more time in the adoration chapel with Jesus than with my girlfriend. And two, although I had a good job at KPMG as an accountant and my career in business looked bright, the more time I spent in the perpetual adoration chapel here at St. Paul's, the more I realized that Christ was claiming me as his own and inviting me to go to the seminary. And so I just had to say yes to this invitation. And so the journey continued out to Westminster Abbey in mission at the Seminary of Christ the King. Ah, what a beautiful sight. And what a great privilege it was to be formed by the Benedictine monks at Westminster Abbey for six years and to live in a community of brothers who have journeyed with me in every step of the way. Thank you so much. And to Monsignor Greg Smith and the whole Christ the Redeemer community, thank you so much for welcoming me into your parish family over the last three years and preparing me in this final step to my journey to the priesthood. God has a plan for us to become saints. He's going to use this time of pandemic to make it happen. And so now I'm here at Corpus Christi Parish. A big thank you first to Father Hamilton. What will be the theme song of your life? Rocky. Yes. <laughs> and to the entire Corpus Christi Parish community in elementary school, I absolutely love being here and I'm so excited to serve you as a priest. As my journey makes its way back to Holy Rosary Cathedral now, I'd like to thank once again my parents, Brian and Monica, my brother Jonathan, his wife Brittany, my two nieces, Olivia and Claire, my three spiritual directors, Father Peter, Father Justin, and Father Joseph, my rector, Father Matthew Gerlich, my three pastors, Father David Poirier, Monsignor Luderbach, Monsignor Greg Smith, all my brother seminarians, especially Deacon Raphael Salvino, and the three vocation directors, Father Brian Duggan, Father Rodney Nudeboss, Father Paul Gu, and Archbishop Miller, who will be ordaining me a priest of Jesus Christ on December 11th. Thank you so much. Here we are back at Holy Rosary Cathedral. My heart is filled with gratitude as I reflect upon the beautiful journey that has brought me to this place. I invite you to join in the live stream of this event on December 11th at 7 p.m. Click on the link down below as you watch this special moment in which I will be ordained a priest of Jesus Christ to serve you, the very people of God. Thank you and God bless. Let's show his golf swing. <laughs>